He, verse there is verse 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. But we're going to come up to that starting from verse 13. The, um, the book of Ephesians is about the richness we have in Christ, just all the blessings, all the things that God has done for us. And here in chapter 3, I, I want to start reading in verse 13 down to the end of the chapter. Wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And this particular portion, uh, starting there in verse 13, one of the things he says there in verse 13 is, don't faint. <laughs> don't faint. Uh, you're just saying there, don't lose courage. You know, there's, there's plenty of trouble in the world, and listen, you can throw up your hands and give up just about any day. Uh, Christians were suffering in those times. Christians are suffering today, but uh, he's saying, don't faint at, at my tribulations. You know, don't get... Uh, bothered and, and sidetracked because uh, I'm suffering. And he says, uh, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying, uh, this is what we pray about. You know, don't faint, pray. <laughs> uh, turn to God uh, for this cause. He says there in, in verse 14, uh, the thing he's been talking about in, uh, in Ephesians is the disjoint between Jew and Gentile that was made right in Christ. You know, you, you see a lot of this in the, in the world, just in general, uh, people that uh, are at, at each other's throats because of some cultural or uh, historic thing. You know, we hate them. Why do we hate them? I don't know. We just hate them, you know. And uh, Jew and Gentile, that was a big problem. And uh, he's saying, for this cause, uh, we uh, bow my knees. Uh, back in uh, uh, the beginning of chapter 3, uh, he said, for this cause, uh, you know, that's the same thing he's talking about in chapter 3, verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Christ had made uh, a, a remedy for that, that trouble. That didn't mean they didn't still have the trouble because not everyone was turning to Christ. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know if you've witnessed to an Australian lately. You know, what, what are we trying to do when we witness to people here? We're trying to get them to be one in Christ with us, with Christ. Uh, we believe that's, that's the only way uh, for them to have eternal salvation. And yet, boy, it can cause you trouble. You know, you witness to different, some people, and man, that'll, they, they get really up, upset. It causes trouble. And he said, for this cause, I bow my knee. Don't faint. You know, don't give up because trouble comes. Take it to the Lord. And uh, trust the Lord, because He is able. We can trust Him. Uh, in verses 16 to 21, He gives us, just real quickly, some things uh, as to why we trust Him. In, uh, in verse 16, He talks about being strengthened by His Spirit. Strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. If you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit. And God's Holy Spirit is able to help you. Uh, in verses 17 and 18, he talks about being indwelt by Christ, that Christ may dwell in your hearts. And, and that phrase has to do with Jesus being at home in your heart. Uh, Jesus should not be a stranger in your heart as, as a Christian. Uh, he should have access to everything. And then he talks about being filled with God in verse 19, filled with all the fullness of God. We have everything we need to live the Christian life. We don't have to faint. Uh, we can trust the Lord because He is able. And He really states it very strongly there in verse 20. Now unto Him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. 
You notice the way he phrases that? He doesn't just say, yeah, God's able. He says he is able exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. More than you could ever even think about God doing, he can do it. More than you could ever think to ask, God can do it. God is able. And this evening, I want us to look at some statements on this, this very subject about God's capability, God's ability in our, in our lives. The first one there being Ephesians 3, verse 20. But go to Hebrews chapter 7 and uh, verse 25. We're going to look at five different verses tonight. And each one has that phrase, he is able. Hebrews 7, verse 25. Number one, God is able to save. Hebrews 7, 25 says... Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Now that phrase is not just talking about salvation, uh, that he can save. It's, it's saying that he can save to the uttermost. Uh, you, you know, if you're in trouble, somebody might save you. You know, maybe you're drowning, somebody saves you. Well, listen, uh, God's salvation is eternal. It's not just a one-time thing. It's not just a little thing. God is able to save to the uttermost, uh, all the way to infinity. <laughs> Jesus offers eternal life, and it's based on his eternal nature. You know, when a person comes to God uh, through Jesus Christ, God is able to save him. Uh, Hebrews 1.8, he, he's talking about the difference between Jesus and the angels, and he says, uh, you know, he, the, the things he says to the angels, but then he says, unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. That's our Jesus. His throne is forever and ever. Uh, angels are created beings. Jesus is God. Uh, he's forever. Uh, in, uh, he, in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In uh, John 6, uh, he said, Him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. I think it's important to know he's not only able, he's willing. <laughs> to save us. And uh, what a blessing. Uh, our salvation is not based on our qualities. We have a beginning. Uh, we're not eternal in that sense, but it's based on God's qualities. God is eternal. He's the eternal God. God is able to save. Save us to the uttermost. Secondly, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12, uh, this is uh, one of the songs we sang tonight. God is able to keep 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. <clears throat> the, the second phrase of the, of the verse, he says, For I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Now, we have assurance of salvation because God is able. The problem is we get our eyes off the Lord and we look at ourselves and we look at, at things. Uh, Jude puts it even more graphically uh, when he says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before uh, the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Uh, unto him that's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory uh, with exceeding joy. Uh, God is able to keep. Uh, God is able to keep us from falling. Um, you know, the, the Bible says in another place, no one's able to pluck you out of his hands. God is able to present us faultless. Uh, I really like that verse in the, uh, the last phrase of verse 24 in Jude when he says, he, he, he presents us faultless the, the, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. I picture it this way. I think I've said this before. You know, God, Jesus is coming to God with me. He doesn't come and say, now, Father, this was the best I could do with this dirty rat, this rotten person, you know. No, he's going to say, Father, here's Bill Bramblett. He's exactly the way I pictured him. What a blessing. And that's, that's God's attitude toward us. And he's able. He's not only able to save us, he's able to keep us. And he's able to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. I like that. <laughs> and there's a lot of times in life when there's not a lot of joy. 
But in heaven, there's going to be joy. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to, to that time. God is able to save. God is able to keep. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and, and verse 8. God is able to supply. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. All sufficiency. All sufficiency. Uh, I made sure I put this sign up here. I know there's one in the, in the foyer there. If God is all you have, you have all you need. <laughs> uh, he's sufficient. God is able to supply. In, um, in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, this is... One of the verses we learned in one of the courses we did last year, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 and, and verse 2, he says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature." having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Now, that's the kind of thing he's talking about. God is able to supply. He's able to make all grace abound toward us. Um, he, he goes on there in Peter, and he talks about uh, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, to patience godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is what we have in Christ. But we're not barren and unfruitful. Now, we have what we need to live the Christian life. But look at verse 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Now, what he's saying there is uh, a person that thinks they don't have those things is, is just blind as to what God is doing. I remember we saw a skit one time about, they called it domestic blindness, where uh, you know, the husband kept asking the wife, honey, wh you know, where's my Bible? Kind of thing. Uh, well, it's right in front of you. Well, honey, where's my glasses? Oh, oh well, uh, you know, there they are. You know, domestic blindness. He, he couldn't see. Well, th this is spiritual blindness he's talking about. God's given us all these things, and we say, Lord, you know, where's my grace? Where is my... Well... It's, it, they're on your nose, or, you know, it's there, you, you have it. Uh, he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten. He's purged from his old sins. God is able to supply. Uh, Warren Wiersbe wrote a commentary on the book of Ephesians. He called it Be Rich. He has a series of things he calls Be This or Be That. And uh, for Ephesians, it's Be Rich. It's all the, about all the things that God has done for us all the things that he's supplied for us. You know, even physically, uh, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God will give us what we need. Now understand, uh, when it comes to physical things, God's not a magic genie. Just because you want something doesn't mean God's going to say that's what you need. Uh, God has a rule, there's probably a few rules, but one is, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It'll make a difference what things you want if you're seeking God's kingdom. God is able to save. God is able to keep. God is able to supply. And particularly talking about spiritual things, God has given us what we need. Thirdly, Romans chapter 14, verse 4, I'm sorry, fourthly, Romans 14, verse 4, God is able to make us stand. All of these are encouraging. Romans 14, verse 4, it starts with the negative. He says, Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. God is able to make him stand. I believe what he's talking about there is God makes, it, makes us able to live the Christian life. In Ephesians, he, he, he talks about putting on the armor. He says, Stand, therefore. Stand. You know, there's, there's plenty of temptations and problems, but God is able to see us through them. 
He's able to make a stand. In uh, Philippians chapter 3, uh, we read one of these verses this morning. Philippians 3, verse 17, he says, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. And he gives the negative. For many walk of whom I've told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. God is able to make a stand. If we'll trust the Lord, we can get through that temptation. We can get through that trial. Uh, it's like the lady when they, they asked uh, everybody's favorite verse, she said, mine is, and it came to pass. <laughs> and what do you mean? She said, it didn't come to stay, it came to pass. Uh, praise the Lord for that. You know, there, there's things we're going to go through. We might go through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, but we don't have to fear because he's with us. He's able to make us stand. You know, Daniel faced a test like this. Uh, they, uh, they threw him in the lion's den, if you remember that fellow. And... Uh, the, the next day, I guess it was, the king came and, and said this. It says, he cried with a lamentable voice. I won't try to imitate it. O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? <laughs> you remember his brothers in Christ, you know, before they said, listen, you can, you can throw us in the fiery furnace and, uh, you know, if God wants to deliver us, he will. If God doesn't want to deliver us, he won't. Well, the, the king calls out to, da to Daniel. Did God deliver you? What did he expect to hear? I don't know. Daniel's voice comes up, O oh, king, live forever. I guess that's a yes. <laughs> uh, you know, God is able to make us stand. God can get us through those things. And listen, if, if we go through something and we die, well, praise the Lord. You get there before I do, or I get there before you do. But we know where we're going in Christ. He's able to make a stand. You know, it may come to a point, uh, in, even in Western countries, where we'll have to decide between standing for the Lord and life. It, it may cause us our death to say, uh, I believe the Bible. But we need to be willing to do that. God is able to make a stand. He'll give us the strength when we need it. Uh, in Philippians, he says, I can do all things. Through Christ which strengtheneth me. In Corinthians, he says, God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. God is able to make us stand. Let me give you one more. In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 18, this is not a commonly used word anymore, but it's the word succor. God is able to succor. That means he's able to help. God is able to comfort. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 18. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. And what that's saying is, he understands what we're going through. Uh, later on in Hebrews 4 verse 15, he, he explains it even further. We have, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. You ever think about that? He, he is touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Uh, you know, infirmities you, you think of as, as sickness. Well, our, our sickness is genetic. <laughs> you know, we, sorry kids, but you inherited it from us. You know, we, we pass it on. All, there's all kinds of things we, we, uh, we go through. And uh, some of them are inward, some of them are outward. But listen, Jesus understands our trials. He, he understands. He's been through them, and he's been successful. That's the kind of help you want. You don't want help from another failure, failure like you or me. You want help from a, a successful person who's gone through it and been victorious. And that's our Savior. God is able to help. He understands what we're going through. In, in verse 16, he says, Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace. Uh, he understands, and we can come to him, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You know, really, understanding is not enough. 
if all he did was understand, well, you know, that, that wouldn't, wouldn't really solve the problem. The Bible says he's able to help us. He understands and he's able to help. Now, these are some good things tonight. I hope that you'll take these verses and, uh, and, and think about them further. God is able to save. Save to the uttermost. God is able to sustain. He's able to keep us. God is able to supply. He has supplied everything we need in Christ. God is able to support and to succor. Listen, doubt yourself all you want. But don't doubt God. Don't doubt God. God is able. If you go back to Ephesians chapter 3 there, let me just re repeat some of the things that he, he gave us. Now, if you're saved, you have God's Holy Spirit. You need to rely on his strength. Don't live like the Holy Spirit doesn't exist. You have God's Holy Spirit. He's saying there in chapter 3, verse 16, uh, to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. Yeah, he's not saying there that, oh, you need to get the Holy Spirit or uh, you need to do something to, to get it. He's saying you need to, to call on that strength, to rely on that strength, to live in that strength. In verses 17 to 19, he talks about we, you have Christ in you. Get to know Him. Uh, let him be at home in your heart. You know, it's not that uh, Jesus isn't there and he's not available. It's just we, we close things off to him. Uh, oh, Lord, you can, you can mess around out here, but don't come in here. Uh, listen, he needs to have access to every area of our life. Every area of our life. Our thoughts, our actions, our relationships. I mean, everything. There's nothing that he shouldn't be at home with in our hearts and lives. Let him be at home in your heart. And he says in verse 19, we have the fullness of God. Listen, there's no more of God that you need. You have. Uh, when you receive Christ as your Savior, uh, you get him. You get the whole thing. And uh, th there's not some second blessing. There's not some, uh, some different thing you have to find. Let him fill you. Uh, let him have access to, to your heart and life. What you need, God is able. God is able. Uh, Ephesians 3, verse 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this evening. Uh, maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart about some areas where you've been uh, blind to what God has done and is doing in your life. Father, thank you so much for your word. But we're thankful that you are able, that we can yield our eternal destiny to you and know that it's in perfect hands. Father, that we can trust you. And Lord, even though we don't always understand what you're doing, we, we trust you. Uh, Father, we, I, I pray that if there are those here tonight that might not be saved, help them to trust you as Savior. Uh, Lord, for Christians, help us to rely on your strength. And Lord, to be, to be grateful, to be thankful to have the joy of the Lord. Uh, Father, I, I ask that you would uh, work in our hearts uh, the faith uh, that we need. Help us to operate in faith and not in fear. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me close with... Uh,